Hello, my name is Keisha Fitzgerald, and I'm coming at you from San Diego, California, and I'm really freaking pumped because I get to talk to you about inviting, which is essentially how we pay forward this opportunity. But I wanna set the stage first. Before we get into your war market, how to invite on social media, and why I think there's so much power in the follow-up, I wanna just set the stage that if you're a brand new coach and you're feeling anxious or you're nervous, Number one, that's normal. But number two, at any given point in time, like right now, you can draw a line in the sand and you can label that excitement. It's your body's same reaction, right? So think about the fact that you were in a challenge group and you got to experience the Beach Body Fitness programs or the performance line or Shakeology or all of it, right? You understand the power of community and a tribe that can support you on your health and fitness journey. You understand what a huge blessing this coaching opportunity might be for you just because you did something outside of your comfort zone when you hit sign up as a coach, right? You know enough right now to invite someone to join you. So I think a lot of us that are new coaches struggle with this analysis paralysis where we wait to collect all of the information before we start. So I'm going to talk to you about three components really quickly today that involve inviting, but I want you to remember that what you know now is enough to connect with someone who is only going to connect with you and your story. So First of all, I think a lot of us get caught up in building our brand, our personal brand. How do we post on social media? How do we find new people? But we have to remember that especially as a new coach, the first place to start is within your warm market, right? If you have something that is blessing your life, that has changed your life, that's helping you be healthier, physically happier, more productive, all of those positive things, don't you want to share that with your neighbor, with your coworkers? right? With your friends, with your family. Often we skip over that warm market and we go straight to how do we build this business on social media. But guess what? If you're a mom, other moms in the neighborhood need to know how you are getting up and getting after it to get your workouts done each day. If you are someone who is in a transition stage or traveling a lot for work, how do you get those workouts done in your hotel room? Well, guess what? Your cousin that also travels for work needs to know about this too. So I would encourage you to sit down first and foremost if you're a brand new coach and make a list of all of the people that you think could benefit that are within your warm circle of influence, right? So then those people, you already have some kind of existing relationship with them. So you can say, hey, Aunt Susie, I know this is kind of random, but I actually decided that I was going to become a beach body coach. I've been doing these fitness programs that I can stream through my iPad. I know you've been working on your health and fitness goals. I was wondering if this would be something that would be up your alley. I'm running a group. It's going to be women from all across the country. We're going to support each other and check in to this private Facebook group. Do you think that would help you at all? I wanted to make sure that I extended the invite to you, right? However you would word that in your verbiage, the most important thing in inviting, I think, is that you lead from your heart, right? And that you sound like you. So write out an invite. Say it out loud. Does it sound like how you would talk to a friend? Does it sound like how you would talk to Aunt Sally or Susie or whatever example I just gave, right? So start with your warm market. That's step one, okay? So after you have talked to people that you do have some sort of existing relationship, you will find that there are a lot of people that you are connected with in some capacity that they already know you. And those people you already have that trust built with, okay? Then we're going to social media. So one thing that I think is really important with social media is that the message that you are displaying publicly on social media posts, let's just use Instagram as an example, on Instagram, that that messaging is consistent with your messaging on Instagram um, in terms of your stories and also how you message privately with people. So a lot of times people think an invite is just putting out a post on social media and saying, who wants to join me? That's not an invite. We have to remember that often people are really nervous to talk about their struggles, especially in, especially in social media when so often people have these picture perfect posts and they're like, kill my workout, kill my workout. We have to remember that those personal messages that are sent to them directly is what's going to build that connective tissue. But before they can actually trust us, if they don't know us yet, we have to make sure that that messaging is consistent on Instagram stories, on your Instagram posts, and in how you actually invite. So I'll give you an example of something that I would say, but remember, you have to use your own voice and describe a challenge group the way that you would describe a challenge group to someone that you're friends with, okay? So for example, 
if I came across someone's profile um, that I connected with and I wanted to invite them to be in one of our challenge groups, I would say, hey girl, I know this is a little bit random, we're just connected on social media, but I like your vibe, you seem like someone that I would be friends with, seems like you're traveling a lot for work. I actually run these busy girl fit tribes, whatever you call them, right? Um, and I have a couple of spots that are available for this next one kicking off. I don't know if that would be something that's up your alley at all, but I'd love to have you and get to know you. What do you think? Super basic. And the way that I do inviting is I start with an overarching um, invite that they're often going to respond in a positive way to. They're like, yeah, sure. Give me more information. Or maybe they're like, well, how much does it cost? Yeah, it sounds like something I might be into. When they respond that way, then I get to be more specific to what that person needs, right? So for example, if they respond back and they're like, yeah, I think I'm interested. How much does it cost? I'm actually not going to answer that question. I'm going to go into the details of what they need. I'm going to ask them this question. Hey, can you tell me a little bit more about your current health and fitness goals? Maybe what's working for you, what's not working as well as you would like. Then we can see if, if this was going to be a good fit. I'm so excited to chat with you, right? Because then our brains are like computers, right? So we have to figure out what's working for us what's not working as well as we would like, and then we get to be a solution provider. And guess what that does in inviting? It takes the fear out because you don't have to know all the answers, right? You just have to connect with that person and find their pain point that you get to help them solve. What a blessing to help someone solve a pain point in their life, right? Same thing goes with a coach invite. Hey girl, I see you posting about your health and fitness journey. Have you ever thought about doing what I do as a coach? Often people don't even know what coaching is, right? Maybe they've never heard of it before. So I'm giving that open invite so they can respond and then I can ask a question to get more information so I can tailor this to them. But I'm sending out an overarching invite to people so that they can respond and then I can make sure that I can understand what their pain points are or why this would be interesting to them, right? And remember, when you first start with inviting, you're going to feel a little bit nervous, but the only way to get better at inviting is to just do it consistently. Experience is the best teacher. My invites when I first started coaching were just crazy, word vomit overwhelming. But over time, I found my voice. And I'll tell you, consistency builds con confidence in this business. And we've got confidence, this business gets easier, right? So consistency of inviting will get you there. And the third point that I wanted to talk about is follow ups. So Regardless of how long you've been here as a coach, what success you've seen as a coach, you will get people that don't respond to you, right? You will get people that quote unquote ghost on you. I think the magic is in the follow-up, right? Because the follow-up show that you care. Follow-ups are a way to say, hey girl, just wanted to touch base with you. I know I invited you back in August and life might've been crazy at that point in time. I just wanted to circle back and let you know, we've got room in this next group for you. Is this a better time for you to jump in? That shows, I want you to know that I didn't forget about you. I want you to know that our relationship matters. And I want you to know that I put your name down and I followed up with you because I think this could serve you, right? So first things first, warm market. Second things, um, your social media in terms of making sure that it's all congruent. Post on Instagram stories post on your Instagram wall, and then make sure that that voice is the same as when you're messaging with people on Instagram via private message. And the third component, follow up. Follow-ups aren't annoying. Follow-ups doesn't make you that annoying beach body girl. Follow-ups show that you care about the person that's on the other end of the screen, because that's a human whose life you can change, and that really matters.